Hi, I'm Marco. Welcome to the Johnson Report. Today is Friday, September 23rd, 2016. And today is actually the day after. The day after what, you may ask? Well, the day after we, as a board of the Florein Foundation, introduced our real alternative currency to the euro, the Florein. This is the flyer that we're distributing. Paying with Florein is always cheaper. This is in Dutch, of course, because this is actually the introduction in the Netherlands as obviously I'm based in the Netherlands, I'm from the Netherlands, and so is our founder, Anthony Michels. He founded the Florijn. He's been working as a monetary reformer for the past 10 years. So I decided to join the board uh, early this year, January, February this year, and I'm now uh, working with, uh, with my colleagues to, uh, to make this a success. It's an interest-free currency, and it's also exchangeable for euro. We think those two elements are very crucial here when it comes to a monetary system. And I will get back to the monetary insanity that we're seeing across the globe with our current monetary system globally with interest money, you know, money that, uh, that bears interest, that um, banks actually kind of rake in, if you, if you will. And uh, well, in, in essence, what we see across the globe is that commercial banks create money at will, pretty much. Um, they also leverage it by uh, thinking of all kinds of monetary instruments that they can use to increase their profits. And when they come into, you know, when they get into trouble financially, then they are bailed out. Bailed in or bailed out really doesn't matter. But in this sense, the way this functions and has been functioning for a long period of time, you can actually say that banks' profits are privatized because they get to keep their profits. But their losses are socialized because we, as taxpayers, as citizens, we bail them out or bail them in, depending on which way uh, we, uh, we look at it. Now that is insanity right there. If you and I would be entrepreneurs, and actually I am an entrepreneur, wouldn't that be a fantastic way to make money? To just, to, to just be able to create something out of nothing, ask for an interest on that, um, think of all kinds of crazy ways to leverage on that money on all kinds of instruments, let's say uh, derivatives that I will show you something of uh, soon um, in, in one of the next programs that I'm doing. And to be able to rake in all the profits and then when you get into trouble, then society bills you out. They save you and then you can move on and start making more profits again. Now that is, of course, a very insane entrepreneurial model and uh, should not be happening as such. I think it's such a big scam, and it's a global scam, that only a few people benefit from this at the expense of everybody else. In essence, you can call this slavery, modern slavery. That's why I'm involved in this monetary reform, and I'm involved in the Florein to make this a success within the Netherlands, and the goal is obviously to make it a widely accepted currency across the Netherlands and hopefully also in other countries around the world. So if you're interested, this runs on, uh, let's say, an open platform that we are looking to roll out across the globe as well. Uh, the talent, it's an open architecture that you can use and that we are, of course, happy to help you uh, with to you know to set it up in your own region or in your own country. So more on that later. I will also feature a number of interviews over the next few years uh, and even the next few months. Uh, I will do one with, uh, with our founder, Anthony Michels, to explain a little bit more about the features of the Florein, you know, what it does, how it helps small and medium-sized enterprises to make more profits or to make more revenues, especially, and how it helps society as a whole um, to, to really distribute income and wealth more equally. Because, you know, in essence, what we do is we take out the, uh, the insane trigger, the insane... Uh, let's call it possibility to make money with money based on interest, which stirs up the prices. It, 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 it makes prices grow, uh, rise out of proportion, really. It makes taxes grow because all of our nations are fully indebted. They're practically bankrupt. Even in the Netherlands, we have pretty much 500 billion euro debt, and we run a deficit pretty much every year. So it's basically the same thing across the globe. And when we hear, for instance, uh, as yesterday uh, appeared in the Telegraph in the United Kingdom, telegraph.co.uk, I will include a link below this video, 
The UN fears third leg of the global financial crisis with prospect of epic debt defaults. And actually this article only focuses on just a very small part of the story, which is, um, which is uh, actually developing nations. And um, you know, that's, just, that's just a very small part of this. They're talking about 25 trillion of debt and the global debt is much, much higher than that. So it is much beyond this article, but it's, it's interesting to see these things coming out into the mainstream news right now and that we do have a problem and that this global debt problem is not going away, is actually growing, which was also apparent from a study done in early 2015 by McKinsey. I've referred to that one a couple of times and um, I'll include a link below this video as well to that article. Uh, debt actually grew by 57 trillion since 2008, since the start of the crisis. So nothing has been solved. It's actually only growing bigger. So why is it necessary that we do some of this reform, this monetary reform? Why should we be engaged in at least accepting these new monetary possibilities, these new monetary systems, and maybe not, not just one, not just a florine, but multiple uh, multiple initiatives are, of course, applaudable. I mean, it's great to have all these different initiatives and to at least find a way to circumvent this banking system, this current monetary system, which is actually monetary insanity. Let's just have a look at some of the numbers that I've been reiterating over the past three years, because this is another, um, another celebration here, because also yesterday, the Janssen Report uh, celebrated its third year of existence on the web. So a big hooray for me personally, I guess, but uh, I'm trying to keep this up for a long time to come, at least for as long as I think it's necessary. Now, over the past three years, I've covered all of this stuff and the monetary insanity is just really, really out of proportion. So let's have a look at some of these numbers again. The US debt right now actually is at 19.5 trillion officially. So per capita, that's let's say 50 grand or so per person, right? This is per person in the United States. Every baby that's born in the United States right now starts with this debt. So uh, that's, that's a realization, a big realization that should sink in right now. But the US has an even bigger problem because there are unfunded liabilities, which in short is the gap between future government spending and government income or taxes mostly without going in depth i've covered this a number of times unfunded liabilities it's like the net discounted value of that um, and, and of course it's a calculation and but it's based on the assumption that uh, the government will not be running a um, let's say um, a surplus because if they run a surplus, they can kind of catch up a little bit uh, in the future on this. They can start paying off some debts. But as we have been seeing, the debts are actually only growing because every government in the world right now, pretty much every government is running a deficit year on year on year. And that is something to worry about. But apart from that, so these unfunded liabilities will, will continue to grow as will the debt because of the deficits that are being run every year. Now the unfunded liabilities in the US are pretty much at, well, they're actually estimated to be much higher than that, 120 trillion, 120 trillion US dollars. So this amounts to about 340 grand, $340,000 per person in the United States. So if nothing is solved, and I don't think it will be in our current system, this will you know, the, the, the U.S. debt will only grow and the burden on people to pay taxes and to work more and to uh, become ever more indebted will also grow. Now, if we look at the world, I mean, the world debt is pretty much, I rounded this off, all of this, is pretty much at 200 trillion, which is on average per person in the world, let's, let's say 7 billion people on this planet, amounts to 28,000 U.S. dollars. 28,000 US dollars of world debt per person. So everybody on this planet is at least indebted that much if you average out over the whole world. The world GDP, so what we create in terms of uh, added value, goods, services, etc., is about 75 trillion, plus or minus a little bit here, 
So that's this one, 75 trillion, which is only about 10,000 US dollars per person. So the world debt is at pretty much three times that much. Three times what we produce annually on a global scale, right? Let that sink in for a minute. Now, I, dis I discussed the US and the world. Now, let's look at a, a, a nice monetary scheme that's going on in the, in the European Union. And it's money printing. It's monthly asset purchases. It's a program uh, which is also called uh, quantitative easing, introduced by the European Central Bank a little while ago. And the asset purchases are on a monthly basis 80 billion, 80 billion euros per month. Now this amounts to, if you look at the inhabitants, the number of inhabitants per, uh, in the, sorry, in the EU, amounts to about 160 euros per person. Now imagine, per person, right? Imagine what you can do with all of this money if it were handed to the people instead of to the banks, because that's what's happening. This banks and, yes, and, and corporations, companies. So also company debt, corporate debt is being purchased uh, by the ECB here. So this is really a bailout of the financial institutions and, and some corporations. But imagine what could be done if we, if the ECB would hand that to the people and how we could reduce debt in that way. Well, I don't think that's the solution uh, anyway uh, as well, but I think the solution is to get rid of the interest on money and that's what we're doing with Florijn. And uh, well, let's, uh, let's keep an eye on that to see what happens to the Florijn in the next year. We're gonna be working hard on, on expanding it, uh, on expanding the acceptance of the Florijn within small and medium-sized enterprises and consumers within the Netherlands. And I, uh, you know, if you're interested in looking at this platform to run in your region, in your country, then of course, it, feel free to contact me or contact uh, Anthony Michels at realcurrencies.wordpress.com. So, thank you for watching the Janssen Report today. This is a neat little drawing by my uh, daughter, uh, which kind of signifies freedom for me. So I figured I uh, keep it in the background here. And I think that's what we should be moving uh, towards. We should be moving back to freedom, away from the slavery of our current monetary system. Let's free ourselves of the shackles of this debt, um, ever-growing debt-based system, especially the interest part is, is what, uh, what should be removed. And speculation with money is, uh, you know, if you look at the derivatives mountain that's out there right now, and that's keeping the, the banks afloat at this point, then uh, that's even, that's another point of insanity. So thanks for watching the Jans Report today and, uh, you know, stick with me here and uh, looking forward to seeing you in, in the near future. Bye-bye.